As she said, I'm actually born and raised in New Hampshire originally. I went away, as you guys heard, for many years to do my training and then kind of came back full circle. I'm from Bedford originally, but live here in Concord now. So I, I have a tendency to talk fast. I'm going to try to slow this down as much as possible, but we have a lot to cover. And it doesn't have to be too formal. If there is a question, feel free to just raise your hand. If you have some burning issue, we can certainly cover it. So this is a talk on reverse shoulder replacement. Just as a general introduction, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the rotator cuff. We're going to talk about what a rotator cuff tear is. We're going to talk about the condition called cuff tear arthropathy, which is what leads to the need for shoulder re uh, reverse shoulder replacement. And then we'll go through some of the specifics of surgery, the indications for surgery, the design of this prosthesis, typical patient outcomes, and then we'll talk briefly about a couple of new applications for the reverse shoulder replacement. How many here have heard of a reverse shoulder replacement before? It's pretty good. Uh, a lot of patients don't even know that shoulder replacement is a thing. You know, they, they're like, you can replace a shoulder? I said, yes, we definitely can. So you don't tend to hear about it as much as you hear about hip or knee replacement just because hip and knee arthritis are so much more prevalent in the general population. So this is a little bit more unique. So basic anatomy lesson. This is your shoulder joint, your glenohumeral joint. Gleno for the glenoid, humerus for your humerus bone here, the ball. It's essentially a ball and socket joint, and naturally your shoulder joint is very unstable. It's almost, we use the analogy of like a golf ball sitting on a golf tee. The socket is actually quite small and the ball is quite big. So the way your body stabilizes this is by the soft tissue attachments around the shoulder, the ligament and muscles. So what are those muscles? The rotator cuff. I found this cool picture of a rotary cuff, which is what a lot of patients in my office will refer to, refer to it as. It's not a rotary cuff, it's a cuff. It's a physical cuff of muscle that um, goes over your humerus bone. And it's made up of four muscles in particular, your subscapularis, your supraspinatus, your infraspinatus, and this little one in the back called the teres minor. We'll go through each of these individually so that we can understand the anatomy because understanding this is how we're gonna get to why we need to replace the shoulder. The subscapularis is the biggest tendon in your rotator cuff. It comes right across the front of your shoulder. You can see it's this giant muscle belly right here. It's what allows you to internally rotate the arm or kind of reach up behind your back. It's probably one of the less common tears that you see, um, but very important for shoulder function. Your supraspinatus tendon is the most commonly torn. So, you know, probably 95% of you who either had or had a friend with a rotator cuff tear, it's gonna involve this tendon. It's what allows you to initiate forward elevation, which is exactly what this woman is doing in the picture, basically overhead reaching. Your infraspinatus tendon is the second largest tendon of your rotator cuff. This um, works to help with a motion called external rotation, which is going on here kind of with this therapy exercise, essentially this kind of rotational movement of the arm at your side. And the teres minor, we rarely see that this is involved this is kind of this little muscle unit on the back. It's the smallest fourth tendon of your rotator cuff. I've actually never seen a tear of it. Maybe there's one out there. It's what allows you to rotate an abducted arm. So picture reaching the back of your head, um, you know, trying to um, bring your hand to the side of your face. So this type of movement is what that tendon assists with. The last muscle that we need to be aware of is your deltoid muscle. Your deltoid is like the big kind of muscle that caps the top of your shoulder. You can picture like in a basketball player, it's kind of that big developed muscle. It accounts, helps with flexion, which is overhead reaching, and also abduction, which is bringing your arm out to the side, and works in conjunction with your rotator cuff, and we'll talk about this a little bit more. There's also multiple other muscular attachments in the shoulder. You can see how many muscles attached to your shoulder blade, your chest muscles, your back muscles, all play in the shoulder function. We're gonna keep it simple. We're trying not to complicate things too much. So we're just gonna focus on the main first muscles and pretend none of this is involved, which it is. So um, how does this all work? Basically, when you try to lift your arm up, your rotator cuff is starting the job. So the first 10 degrees, your rotator cuff is initiating that motion and it's basically, Smushing your humorous bone into